one, this particular one's called a grasshopper cannon. Loading it's pretty simple. We'll just start on the front of the gun. There'll be two, two cannoneers on the front of the gun or two gunners on the front of the gun. Indeed, so the first man, implement right. here is called the worm or the wad hook. Looks oh, like yeah. a corkscrew that you would open up a wine bottle with. Basket. And what, what it's for is we use bags of black powder that are pre-measured bags. Mm -hmm. So let's say if we're shooting at 800 yards, we would have this many ounces of black powder with whatever projectile we were shooting that we know would reach out to 800 yards. Mm -hmm. But it's made out of linen or silk or something that's, that's cloth Burned. that after really? you fire it, it could smolder down in the barrel. And so we want to get any of that debris that could be smoldering out before we put another charge yeah, down the barrel. Be, like On that. the order to search piece, the wad hook goes down the barrel and it's looking to drag any of that extra stuff that could be smoldering out. Now the next implement is up here on the right side of the gun. It's, it's called the sponge rammer. So we got a sponge on one side and a rammer on the other side. This sponge is normally wet. So after we've advanced worm and searched piece, the next order is advanced sponge. So the sponge is gonna sit here. Uh -huh. There's a third position here in the back. That's the person that's, that's known as the pick and prime position. That, yeah, they would have a what's called a thumb stall, which is a piece of leather that goes over their thumb. And the order is to tin vent. So they would take that leather and they seal up the vent on the back of the gun. And what that does is it's gonna cut off any air escaping out of the gun when we ram the sponge down because if you're pushing air like a piston and there's anything still smoldering in there, it's gonna make it hotter, right? It's not gonna extinguish it. So by tending the vent, when we push this sponge down, one, it keeps you from pushing air and fanning any flames, but when you bring it out, and it's, well, let's do it this way. We'll get a, a much better thunk, maybe. So what it does when you draw it back out, you hear that suction? Mm -hmm. That's It actually created a vacuum that would extinguish anything that the wet didn't put out. The vacuum would take all the oxygen away from it and smolder. Because again, everything about these first two positions is about making sure when we go put another charge down that barrel, it's not gonna go off while your hands are in the gun. Mm -hmm. So there's a fifth position back here at the back that there, that box, that's the magazine that holds the powder and shots that we would fire out of this can. So after we've sponged the piece, the uh, order would be to handle cartridge. They're gonna bring the cartridge up here to the front of the gun and the person with the wad hook will have handed off their implement to the person behind them and they're ready to receive that cartridge. And then on the handle cartridge, they hand it to the wad hook person, charge piece. The cartridge goes down into the barrel and the whole time, the person on pick and prime has kept their finger over the vent hole and this rammer side, when they reverse the implement, is standing by. Charge goes down and then they're gonna say, ram down cartridge. So what you wanna do is you make eye contact between these two positions so that you, you're both on the same page that you're ramming that cartridge down the proper way because when we do this next step, if the cartridge is not all the way down there, you're not gonna be in the bag. So you make eye contact, goes all the way down and you make sure that that cartridge or that charge is rammed all the way home. The next command is gonna be pick and prime. So this position would have basically a metal pick that they're gonna insert down the vent and they're gonna open up that bag of black powder, okay? There was a couple different ways to do this in period. Um, the way we do it is... Um, it's kind of, I mean, like see this and there. So when I'm putting this in, I'm punching right. the bag, mm -hmm. yeah. So there was a couple different ways to do this in period. We kind of use a hybrid way for safety purposes. You'd have a metal pick and you'd open up the bag. And now the French would have a big powder horn and you would just dump powder down the vent. And when you lit it, it would burn down to that hole in the bag and fire the gun. Uh, the Brits had what they called quick fire tubes, which were brass tubes that were sharp on the end that acted as both the pick and the prime because they were filled with black powder. The Americans tried to emulate that a little bit where you would have a, a manual pick, but then you would fill a quill from a feather full of black powder and you could jam that down into the touch hole. What we do is we've got uh, paper straws that we've created quick fire tubes out of. Uh, and it's just from a safety aspect because typically when you fire the gun, it ejects the quick fire tube out. And you don't, just want, you don't want metal and stuff falling out of the sky when you're doing this. So then the next command is pick and prime. They pick open the bag and prime the touch hole 
and then they're going to look back at the gun commander and tell the gun commander gun is ready to shoot. The final position here is what's called the uh, lens stop. Okay, the cotton rope there is called slow match. It's it's a natural fiber rope that's been treated with a chemical so that it burns very very slowly. Hence the name slow match, but it burns very very hot. So. You guys are old enough to remember when smoking was a thing all the time. So think about the end of a cigarette or the end of a cigar is how hot that the end of that burns. The other position is the gun commander and they're gonna have their sword drawn, okay? So the Linstock position is watching the gun commander, not simply listening for the fire command, but watching for the sword to drop. Because as you can imagine, we would probably be in a battery of several cannons it's a fairly loud report even out of a little three pounder and we're only shooting blanks so it's not nearly as loud as it would be with a projectile in front of it. Um, so you don't go when you just hear the word fire because that could be the gun beside you, it could be the line of musket that are to your left. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army represented by the Commander in Chief Star, Alpha Company, 4th Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, is proud to present this special performance. With a heritage of service that spans over two centuries, the Old Guard has a unique dual mission. It is the Army's official ceremonial unit, an escort to the President of Washington, D.C., and it is entrusted with the responsibility of protecting...